Hi, this is Steve Johnson with Induction Solutions. Uh, we're basically putting together a little bit of information on video for solenoid maintenance. Basically a how-to, what to look for uh, on refurbishing your solenoids and the advantages to freshening up your solenoids. Uh, basically going to go over disassembling it, replacing the plunger, reassembling it, and putting back into service. Okay. At Induction Solutions, we pretty much have all the different types of plungers and service kits for almost anybody's solenoids out there, including our own. Uh, basically, the common kit is going to come with a solenoid wrench, which this end you can take the stem out of the solenoid, and that end you can take the nut off the top of the magnetic coil. Uh, the other parts that typically come in a rebuild kit, the main plunger that goes in the solenoid, the spring, that returns it back to its seat as well as the o-ring those are the basically the three components that when you're rebuilding a solenoid you're replacing the plunger being the most critical one of the questions you may be asked when you call to order plungers would be if you have a self-compensating or a pin plunger in the nitrous side uh, the difference is as you can see here this is what we call a pin plunger larger diameter the white teflon plug and it's very flat across the face. This is what we call a self-compensating plunger. You can notice the plug for the Teflon is a smaller diameter and it has a raised ring that you'll notice in the center and probably most notice noticeable is that the thing actually is floating in there versus this is solid, pinned. Uh, those are just important, you know, as we mentioned before, also knowing the diameter of the stem and the overall length. You know, that's just to try to, we always try to get that information to reassure getting you the right parts. Um, most commonly, you used to see the pin plungers, where today more commonly you're seeing the self-compensating. And you can't mix, you're not really, you can't put one in the other because the stem depths are different and the lengths of these are different. So you want to make sure you have the right plunger for the right solenoid. On a self-compensating plunger where it has the raised ring around the outside we, we like to measure basically from the flat and we measure across the raised area for our dimension. Having the diameter of the stem and the length overall of the plunger is just another essential part in making sure we get you the right part the first time 100 percent. Okay Basically, let's, we've got a nitrous solenoid here that we're going to replace the plunger in. The first thing you're really going to want to do is take your wrench and loosen the stem nut that's on the top of the solenoid. You'll remove this basically so you can remove the coil cover and the, and the coil that actually actuate the solenoid. This is going to usually come off in, in a one-piece unit it's, it's the steel cover as well as your coil that's inside. From there you've got the stem. You're going to take your spanner wrench that removes the stem. You're going to put it on the solenoid stem. Hold on to it. It's going to come loose. From there you'll want to take the stem out of the solenoid. Kind of being careful because as you take this apart you can drop the plunger out, the spring, or you have the o-ring inside the solenoid that you're going to replace. So those would be the parts that you're going to take. You would take your old three out. At this point in time it's a good idea to really inspect the solenoid for overall condition. Uh, you know you can look at your orifice. Most importantly we basically use screened filtered fittings on the inlets of our fittings and we also want to make sure they're clean, nothing's in there, no obstructions, no reduction in flow. You should always put filtered fittings in both your nitrous side as well as this is a, a fuel screen that we use in our fuel solenoids. Eighth pipe to number six, again with the filtered fitting and the filter accessible to the inlet. It's a lot easier to clean it or see it uh, versus how we used to have them in the back like you know most other manufacturers. We've, we've taken the solenoid apart, we've cleaned all the pieces, blown everything off. This is one of our side-in bottom exit solenoids, but also has a purge port on the outlet side. So again, we've put a new filtered fitting in, 
We'll take the new O-ring from the rebuild kit, put it in the base, make sure it's in place. Next, we'll take the stem that we've already cleaned up and we'll take the self-compensating plunger. That's what all of our solenoids that we currently uh, sell have it in uh, as far as our side in, side out, side in, bottom out. And then basically put the spring in place, making sure that the coils on the spring aren't overlapped. Uh, you want to make sure that basically the spring's on there and free floating. We put the spring and the plunger in the stem, again making sure nothing's in there and that it's free. And then from that point we'll go ahead and drop it in place and screw it on to the base. You can feel it go down and contact the o-ring, it'll snug up and then basically from there the last little bit you can snug up good with your wrench and you're ready to go ahead put the coil and the coil cover back on the solenoid. I'll just kind of get them on, wiggle them back in place. Take your nut and go ahead and run it back on the top and then snug it down with the other end of your wrench. Again, remember you've got a metal coil cover over the plastic coil so you want to make sure you get this tight enough it's not going to come loose and fall off but you don't want to try to over tighten it and risk breaking the coil. Basically the solenoid is back in order ready to go back in place and ready to function again. Thanks for watching our videos taking your time we appreciate it and if there's anything we can help you with you can visit us on our website at inductionsolutions.com or you can call the shop at area code 352-593 5900 and we'd be glad to answer any of your questions or help you out. We appreciate your time. Thanks.